Uh, Randy was a bit of a loner, but knew what he liked and, and knew what he valued and, and stood up for that. He didn't take much from other kids, you know what I mean? If they were a friend to him, then he'd be a friend to them. Or he would be the type of kid that would take the underdog and pull him under his wig. He always protected the underdog, like um, if there was a bully bullying another kid, he would always stand up for that kid. So he graduated high school and was a three-year Ironman. And in the process of being a three-year Ironman, he was, um, at, uh, I think one of those years, he was voted uh, uh, Mr. Intensity. When 9-11 occurred, Randy joined the ROTC program at Mountain View High School. And though we were 3,000 miles from New York City and from DC, it directly affected us like it did most Americans. The day he left for boot camp was really hard. While he was in boot camp, he, um, Randy was the type of person where he wanted to stay in the back and not be noticed. And um, it wasn't long before he was a um, squad leader. And he didn't want that. You know, he wanted to be in the back. And, but he was just like that leader person. Another day passes and he tells me, he said, well, my guys got hit today. He said, Dad, I feel like it's my responsibility to get as many of these guys home as I can. I'm talking to him, he said, Dad, he said, I lost four of my boys. And he begins to cry. And then like in the same breath, he says, but we saved more than we lost and the guys are good right now. That phone call went after, he, after he, he had lost his buddies was probably the hardest because it changed, it changed the way we thought about the deployment because at no time did we not think that Randy was coming home. So 20 days prior, when we lost the four Marines and he was so crushed, that changed things for me. And I can tell you it changed things for him. Kenny comes running out of his room. He said, there's a van here. And I'm thinking, who? You know, because nobody's going to come down the driveway and turn around, you know, if they're lost. So I got up and I went and looked out the picture window downstairs. And I said, oh, God, Jerry, it's the Marines. was the biggest, the fastest, and the strongest. No way, right? And, and of course, that's not how it works. This was Randy's that we got um, from the Marine Corps after he had died. To the person who finds this note, if something happens to me, make sure that my family gets all of my personal belongings in this note. To my dear loved ones, if you are reading this, I have gone to make the journey to see the Maker. I want you to know I've lived a good life. It's just my time to go home to God. I know this is hard to read, but celebrate the life I lived and be happy for me. My troubles are all gone. This world is not perfect, but I can say I did my part to make it better. You are all my life. I can't tell you all how much I love you. I'll see you again. Only time sets us apart. Today's his birthday, so we will um, take 31 balloons up to the top of the butte, and at 5.30 tonight, we'll let him go. And uh, that was Kenny's idea when he was eight years old. We write messages on him and send it up to heaven. Everybody say happy birthday, Randy. Happy birthday, Randy. Happy birthday. There was a, a guy that was in ROTC with Randy, and I can't remember the, guy, the kid's name, showed up here the week of his death. Uh, in uniform, and he wanted to deliver a message from his father, who was a Vietnam vet. And he said to us, you need to tell his parents that this was not a wasted life. Mm -hmm.